Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes, I'm Ian. Today we're going to continue going over our small service mount production line that we brought back from China. Last time we looked at the solder paste dispenser. This is a tool that uses compressed air to shoot out little bits of solder paste onto a PCB. This week, we'd really like to look at the pig and place machine, but it's not here yet. So we hand placed some parts on a board, and now we're going to use them in this reflow oven. And we'll go over the reflow oven today in more detail. A reflow oven is a way of soldering. You put a board in the drawer, it has some infrared tubes at the top, and they heat up according to a certain profile and melt the solder and weld the parts to the board. Hot plates seem to be a lot more popular than reflow ovens. I know Adafruit uses one, Freak Labs has one. Just about every workshop I've been in has a hot plate, but rarely does anybody have an IR reflow oven. Probably for a couple reasons. Reflow ovens are about four times to five times more expensive than a hot plate, and they take up a lot more room. Also, people seem to have way more luck using hot plates. You're able to see the parts reflow and correct things as there's problems. I remember an old article on SparkFun where they bought a very expensive reflow oven and ended up using a cheap hot plate, like an actual cooking hot plate from a Target instead, because it works so much better. An industrial hot plate is, is an even better tool than that. I like the reflow oven though, because it's set it or forget it. If you can get it working right, you just put your boards in there, hit the button, and it takes it through the nice temperature profile all on its own. With a hot plate, you either put it on and just let it reflow, or you need to emulate the temperature curve by setting a lower temperature, letting things heat up, and then blasting more heat onto it until it solders. So the reflow oven I picked up is the QS5100. It was about $220 US list price in Hua Chong Bay in China. This is the same brand used by Seed Studio, although a bigger one. We also saw it in the Smart Maker workshop when we interviewed Dimitri. They have both this version and the bigger one. There's another one out there, the AT962, I believe. It's made by a Tim, but also a number of generic knockoffs exist, like all this stuff. Uh, and it's a little bit bigger than this and slightly more expensive, but I like this one better. This only has two infrared tubes, and the bigger AT963 also only has two infrared tubes. And that's barely enough to cover this much workspace. For an oven this size, two tubes barely does it. And if you move to the bigger one that still only has two tubes, you start to have reflow problems all around the edges of the drawer. To test out the oven, we're going to solder an RGB LED controller. This is one made up by Shock. I think this is a good first board to test because of those variety of parts and different shapes, sizes, and thermal mass. We have little tiny 0603 parts, a voltage regulator, a bunch of FETs, an 8-pin SOIC chip, and then this big power connector over here that could actually be very difficult to reflow. I've already used the solder paste dispenser to shoot a little mechanic paste onto the pads, and then I've hand placed the components on the board. Now I'll put it in the oven and we'll fire it up. As always, I put the PCB on top of two smaller PCBs. That lifts it up off the metal drawer so it heats more evenly. Several people who own this machine recommended this for more even heating. It's worked really well for us, but honestly, I haven't tried it without either. The thing an oven does that's really cool is it follows a certain temperature profile. Now for each solder paste, there's gonna be a combination of temperatures and timings I've heard a lot about solder reflow profiles, but they didn't make a lot of sense to me until I started using a reflow oven. Here's an example profile for simple tin lead solder. The first phase is the preheat phase. This is where everything comes up to an initial temperature. Here they're suggesting 150 degrees Celsius. That's so everything expands and there's less thermal stress on all the components on the boards. So you get it up to a good working temperature, and then you let it, they say here, soak. This is for the fluxes to become active and the solder to begin to melt and warm. Our machine calls this the heat phase, and over about 60 seconds we raise the temperature to 180 degrees Celsius. Then, very quickly, we raise the temperature up to the soldering temperature, which here they're recommending 208 to 230. We're using the very low end of that to keep from scorching boards, just about 208 degrees. After soldering for a very brief time, less than 30 seconds usually, then there's a keep period. This is where we let the temperature fall naturally and gradually. That way the solder can set cleanly and neatly. After we fall to a preset temperature, in our case, we keep to about 180 degrees Celsius. Then the fan on the back of the unit comes on and starts a fast cool down process. And that'll lower it the rest of the way down. So the temperature profile is entered here and press set and scroll through each phase. First we have the preheat phase, that brings all the components on the boards up to 150 degrees Celsius and then holds it for one minute. Next we have the heating phase, where it 
pulls everything up to 180 degrees so it's ready to solder and then holds it for 58 seconds. Next we have the solder phase where it reaches the peak temperature of 210 degrees and then holds it for 30 seconds of soldering time. After that we have the keep phase. This is the natural cool down. It lets it naturally cool down to 180 and once it hits 180 the fan kicks in and we force cool it down to 150 but really it just continues cooling down until the boards reach room temperature. To start the process all I have to do is hit the run button. Everything else is controlled automatically. It'll take about 10 minutes to reflow this board and while we're waiting I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I've learned about this machine using it. Compared to some of the cheap inexpensive models that are on eBay this one I believe is a bit better. It has the endorsement of people who use it in production, which is always an excellent thing. You know, Seed Studio has been using this brand, although the bigger one, for years to reflow all of their boards. But beyond that, the cheap ones on eBay have a few problems that I've read about in forums and places. So I was kind of concerned this would have the same problems, but it didn't. One of the things I keep reading about the cheap eBay models is that the timer is off. They can't actually ramp up the temperature enough to meet the heating profiles, so instead it stretches out the time to meet what it actually can heat up. I've timed this as it cooks, and the timer seems to be within two to three seconds accurate. Another concern is the fumes. Many of the cheap eBay models, when you run them, they produce just a terrible amount of stinking fumes. I've not had that problem with this. I can definitely smell the flux coming up off the board as it's heating now, but it doesn't make any smells that a normal soldering process wouldn't. And we're back. The oven's cooled down to about 70 degrees Celsius, which is a fine temperature to pop out the board. So let's take a look at what we did. Hey, hey, I must be getting better at this. This worked quite well. Uh, you can see the SOIC chip and the 0803, the capacitors, they all soldered just fine. They always do. I was a little concerned with this voltage regulator because it's got this large metal tab there and a lot of stuff to heat up, especially with these FETs that are quite large and have these big heat sinks. I was worried we wouldn't get complete reflow under there, but that seems to have worked fine. And then finally over here, this power connector also got a, quite a bit of metal there. I was worried it might not reflow, but more so than that, I worried that the reflow oven might melt or deform this before we actually got it soldered, and that didn't seem to happen. So all in all, highly successful on this run. So that's it for this week. Next week we'll be back, hopefully with a pick and place machine. If not, we'll show you the hot plate, which is a much more popular way for small shops to solder boards. Thanks for watching.